Hey gents and gentlemen, let's take a quick race around the track of cars from Pixar. This movie is full of new and old Easter eggs. Hey Lightning, you ready? One of the first Easter eggs that most people notice is on the race car. The tire says Lightyear. Now some people think that it's a shout out to the Goodyear Tire Company, and others think it's a play on Buzz Lightyear. But if you look really closely at the tire, you will see it says Sector 4 Gamma Quadrant. Not convinced because some of the words are out of you? Well, here's another shot where they let us see the entire phrase. So clearly these tires are defenders of the galaxy. Actually, I, I'm, I'm stationed up in the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4. They did, however, put in an Easter egg for Goodyear Tire. If you've ever been to a big sporting event in person or on TV, then you will recognize Goodyear the blimp floating above the stadium. When Lightning McQueen's two biggest fans flash their headlights at him, that's a little adult humor. See how McQueen reacts when he sees them? If you don't get what's being implied here, come back to this video in a few years. When we look at the sea of campers in the middle of the racetrack, you will see a custom paint job on the back of this RV of the Jackalope from Pixar short, Bounded. And we can see that Bing Bong's wagon made it from inside out in both of the races. Also, you might not know this about cars, but the directors John Lasseter and Joe Ramfant took some of the crew and actually went on a journey of Route 66 before making the film to find accurate inspiration. The Mother Road. This was an Easter egg to the book Route 66, The Mother Road. The author of that book was Pixar's tour guide on their research trip. It's not the destination, it's the journey. Also, just like Toy Story, John Lasseter makes such good movies because he makes movies that relate to him personally and they always have a meaning. Daryl Waltrip is the voice of this broadcaster and in real life, he is one of the best motorsports broadcasters of all time. When the cars came off turn four and they're coming down to take the green, I said, Buggity, 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 let's go racing, boys. <laughs> buggity, 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 boys, let's go racing. And these two guys are Tom and Ray, otherwise known as Click and Clack, from a real life car show. Don't drive like my brother. Oh yeah, don't drive like my brother. And you guessed it, that's an Easter egg to their show. I'm sure you recognize Dynaco as the gas station from Toy Story. Dynaco is everywhere in this movie. One of the cars has a slogan on its bumper, leak less. And you can see this part only if you're a fast reader or you press pause. This is adult drip pans for old cars. Did you miss this joke? Basically, if cars were people, this would be an advertisement for adult diapers. Speaking of bumpers. I know what that is. He said it was called uh, a butt. And that butt is a shout out to the butt in Toy Story 2. The number on Chick Hicks' car is 86, and we all know by now, I hope, that 1986 is when Pixar was born. And Steve Jobs basically gave birth to Pixar. Steve was also part of the executive team for Cars. Here is a not-so-hidden Easter egg to Steve with his Apple Empire's logo. And naturally his car's number is 84 because Apple's first computer went up for sale in 1984. Now let's point out some of the other car numbers. Number 8 is the number and voice of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Hey Marco, it's a beautiful day for a race, isn't it? Absolutely, Mr. Andretti. The number 11 car is Mario Andretti. The number 43 car is Richard Petty. And his car is really blue in real life. on the home stretch, a car upside down. And that's a Richard blue Petty. car, it is Richard Petty. Oh no. <sighs> what are you doing, kid? I think the king should finish his last race. Luigi is a big Ferrari fan, so it makes sense that his license plate is 44.5-10.8. That's the GPS location to the Ferrari manufacturing plant. Sarge's license plate is 41WW2. Why? Because he went into service to World War II in 1941. There's a lot of love out there, you know, man. Fillmore's plate, 51237, is a bunch of random numbers, right? Nope. It's an Easter egg to George Carlin, which is the voice for Fillmore, and his birthday is on May 12, 1937. And Claire's plate is 301 PCE, but, but, 
I'm not exactly sure what that one's referencing to. Unless it's part of another phone number. Does anyone know what it's referring to? If so, please let me know. And of course, Lightly McQueen. <coughs> and of course, Lightly McQueen's number, 95, is a shout out to Toy Story since Toy Story's release date was November 22nd, 1995. Also, even McQueen's name is an Easter egg to Glenn McQueen. He worked with John Lasseter on several movies, including Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Monsters, Inc. Now, unfortunately, he passed away in 2002, so the Pixar team named the star of Cars after Glenn McQueen. Speaking of numbers, a Pixar movie without A113 isn't exactly a Pixar movie. When Lightly McQueen is trying to outrun the train, Pixar makes A113 a little easier to find. If you're an Easter egg noob, Basically, A113 is a classroom from Cal Arts, a famous art school that most all the great artists and animators went to. They had A113 on the nose of the train that Lightning McQueen came inches from hitting. They left it visible for so long that most people will notice this Easter egg without even having to press power. You just watch this right here, lover boy. Also, they hid A113 in Mater's license plate. Now, this one was not as easy to notice being how hyper Mater always is and being caked in rust. Maybe Lightning McQueen can give him a free bottle of Rusties now that they're best friends and all. Wow, look at that shine! Unless, of course, Rusties is just snake oil. It does have fine print saying that it takes 36 weeks to see results. My name's Mater. Speaking of Mater, did you know that Mater is based off a real life person? To a Mater without the toe. I said, you know, that's Mater. <laughs> yeah, like to a Mater, but without the toe. When they went on their little road trip, they met a man named Mater. So do you know where he gets his name from? If I wasn't eating a tomato, I was throwing them at the hogs and just terrorizing everything I could. Also, the voice of Mater is Larry the Cable Guy, and one of his catchphrases got put in the movie. Oh, come on. That's funny. I don't care who you are right there. <laughs> I don't care who you are. That's funny right there. Also, the Pixar ball is in there. Not nearly as easy to spot as the Pizza Planet truck, but it is in there, and it's lit up. When they finally plug in all the neon signs for the town, look at Sarge's sign. It's a neon version of the Pixar ball. Now this Easter egg is just like Inside Out. When they were on the open road going to California, if you look closely, you can see and hear that they put the birds on the wire as an Easter egg to Pixar short for the birds. At the truck stop, we also see on the side of the trucks there are several Easter eggs. TS is for Toy Story, I Inc. The I is for the Incredibles logo, and Inc. is for Monsters, Inc. Then, FN is for Finding Nemo. But if you notice, it is late, and Mac is driving into the sunset, and we learned from my Toy Story video that the sun sets in the west. Figure that all out on your own, did you? Okay, watch this. Every single label on the east side of the trucks was an Easter egg to a movie that was already made before they made Cars. But there isn't a reference to Bugs Life. And also, why in the world did they go through all that extra effort to make only one truck have letters on the west side of the trucks? And it reads OMB. What if they were saying they put all the old movies on one side of the trucks and movies they haven't made yet on the other side of the trucks? And what if OMB stood for one more bug? You know, like Bugs Life 2? Perhaps this was an easter egg to a future movie of Bugs Life. What do you think of that? When Lightning McQueen gets a makeover from Radiator Springs, one thing I don't understand. He got new tires and a new paint job for his big race. What do you think? But when he was in the big race, no custom paint job, no white wall tires. What happened to his makeover? Well, let's go back and look at those white wall tires. They are the same set of tires that Carl and Ellie from Up had. And if you remember, they had a tire blowout. So maybe that's a cheap brand of tires and that's why McQueen went back to the Toy Story tires. And even Sally, the diehard town supporter, doesn't wear white wall tires. So what's the deal with the white walls? Are they not that good? Never mind, let your tires get flats too. But even the radio announcer mentions the makeover he just got. Lightning McQueen, missing all week and then he turns up in the middle of nowhere in a little town called Radiator Springs. Wearing white wall tires of all things. This one looks like it's just a mistake in editing and not an Easter egg. After the race back at Radiator Springs, once again he has his old paint job back, but not the white wall tires. Speaking of the last race, Pixar once again likes to show us where they live. 
The car in the Rusty's commercial is sporting a custom license plate with the abbreviated version of Emeryville, which is where Pixar is located. And just for those with doubt, the final race is held in Emeryville. Is that a big enough hint? And when the jets fly over the city, you can see the real life Pixar Studios in animated view. Inside the stadium, they also have sitting right next to the Elvis RV, our favorite delivery truck, the Pizza Planet truck. Just outside the stadium, there's a taxi called Vern. There's actually a Vern's taxi service in the area of Emeryville, but I'm not sure what the connection is between them and Pixar. This guy's name is Peterbilt, not Mac. Mac? I ain't no Mac, I'm a Peterbilt for dang sake. But the truck is actually made by a truck company in real life called Peterbilt. Also, Mac is a reference to a real trucking company called Mac. Bound In was a Pixar short that you probably saw. Basically, it's about a sheep that is full of happiness and loses all of what it thinks is the source of its happiness. Then it learns that it can be happy regardless of what's happening around it. We already saw the jackalope in the RV mosh pit. But did you notice that Stanley, the dead car, is also the car from Bound In? But here's where it gets weird. Stanley was driven by a human. So how does he fit with the whole Pixar theory? Since we're talking about Stanley, the founder of Radiator Springs, seems like a perfect time to look at the town a little more closely. At Flo's gas station, we see a shout out to Bugs Life in car form. The cars are little bugs flying towards the light. No, Harry, no! Don't look at the light! I can't help it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> also, I find it a little bit funny that the sign that's advertising a one-day sale is clearly up year-round. And if you look right under the sign, you will see an old Dynaco logo before it used Arlo as a mascot. Flo's gas station is a shout out to Flo from Finding Nemo. I'm telling you, man, every third blink is slower. The yellow light actually does not blink slower the third time. So maybe the hippie needs to lay off the organic fuels. The 60s weren't good to you, were they? Also, that barbed wire that Lightning McQueen gets tangled up in while running from Sheriff is an Easter egg. Remember, the creators went on a Route 66 road trip before making the movie to find inspiration. On that trip, they visited a place called the Devil's Rope Museum, which is basically a museum dedicated to barbed wire and its history. Which makes sense, if the devil used rope, that would probably be the kind of rope it used. I was also wondering this, if the freeway bypassed the town and they never get traffic, then how in the world did the road get so beat up in the first place before McQueen messed it up even more? <laughs> oh wait, now I know how it got messed up. At the courthouse slash town hall slash fire building, you can see a thermometer in the window design. That's a reference to radiators because they are a part of the engine that helps control the engine's temperature. Also, behind the thermometer, you can see the Death Star from Star Wars. And in the other windows, you can see Pokeballs. Radiator Springs Mountain has letters on it showing it's their mountain, like most places do. Also, their mountain resembles a older air intake, which is part of the engine. Just like you see on Mater, this piece. Ornament Valley is just east of Radiator Springs. But why is it called Ornament Valley, you ask? You know what ornaments are for Christmas trees? Well, cars basically have what's called a hood ornament, and the oldie days hood ornaments were often the flashiest part of the car. Today, only a few companies still have baller hood ornaments, and some of the cars, like Rolls Royce, if you try to steal that baller ornament, it disappears into the car. So if you look at Ornament Valley, you will see the rocks resemble cars from the oldies with hood ornaments. Also, the Wheelwell Motel is inside a mountain that is shaped like a car. Look at this! This sign is an Easter egg. Again, referring to that road trip, one of the places they visited was called Jack Rabbit Trading Post, and they have that very same sign. The Traffic Cone Hotel is also an Easter egg to a real place the creator stopped at on the road trip called the TP Curious. Yeah, the Cozy Cone. Also, Sally has a cactus in her lobby that's in the shape of a car. On the other side of their town is Cadillac Ranch, which of course is reference to a tourist stop that the team stopped off at in real life. So basically it's a place where some crazy artist shoved 10 Cadillacs in the ground and people come from all over the world to get their picture taken with it. And if you look closely at the mountains, you can see rock formations in the shape of these cars. 
Obviously, the movie had to use rock formations instead of actual cars because in cars, cars are like humans. So if they used cars, it would be like humans having a bunch of human legs sticking out of the ground. Nick Knack is one of Pixar's short films, and they laid some eggs for it throughout the movie. In the trailer mosh pit, you can see the swimming pool, flamingos, and palm trees from Nick Knack. And back at Lizzie's store, we can see the snowman with the jackhammer. He was the one that was stuck in the snow globe. Looks like he finally escaped once again just to find himself in a new snow globe. At the end of the movie, they played several movies in car form in the drive-in theater. Toy Story. You are a toy car! Monsters, Inc. Stuck out here in this wasteland without change! And Bugs Life. Go, go, go! Circus cars! How can you be circus cars? Welcome to the Himalayas! Snow goat? Oh, that abominable snowplow is quite the comic thespian. John Rath was the co-director for Cars and did several voices for Pixar in the past, which they point out at the end of the movie. Unfortunately, he died in a car accident. He helped with many of your favorite films like Monsters, Inc., The Emperor's New Groove, Bugs Life, Oliver and Company, Lion King, Aladdin, and many, many more. He was a greatly talented artist, and he will be missed by Pixar, Disney, and all of his fans like you and me. The best part I like about Pixar films, though, is that they all have a life lesson hidden in the story. With Cars, we learn that we often think about being first or getting to the finish line as fast as possible. Hurry, hurry, hurry. But sometimes we need to learn to just stop and take the time to enjoy the journey along the way. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure you subscribe, and I will let you in on a little bit of a secret. When I make these type of videos with Easter eggs and all, I hide my own Easter eggs in there. Sometimes people will find them, but a lot of times no one even notices they're there. Can you find the Easter eggs I put in this video or any of these other videos? Remember, gents and gentlets, share a smile. They are contagious.